Game one tip off finally seconds away Spanish language version of tonight's game presented by ESPN Deportes with the SAP function. We're set to go for the championship with the Lakers and the Celtics. There's the officiating crew the veteran Dick Pavetta the crew chief as we're underway as we said moments ago the BLA chance started about an hour ago as these Celtic fans have waited a long time to watch the finals and Al Gasol a big pickup during the course of the season for the Lakers with the first two points of the game in a series that features the best offensive team in the playoffs the Lakers against the best defensive team the Boston Celtics Ray Allen throws up a shot they're gonna wave it off and he traveled Mark, you play in an NBA Finals game. Is there really a lot of difference from other big playoff games when you first step on the floor for game one? Well, you can sell to yourself that it's not, but you can just sense the environment here, the, the crowd going crazy. Guys realize that it's a different ball game, but what you have to do is individually and collectively realize nothing changes. Continue to do the same thing that you've done to get to this point. Derek Fisher, who has been terrific for the Lakers in his return, Odom inside, misses. All battle around, knocked out of bounds. So will go the other way, Celtics. Jeff, both teams winning a conference championship. The Lakers knocking out the defending champion San Antonio Spurs in five games. Meanwhile, the Celtics beating the Pistons. And as Doc Rivers said, they've heard congratulations. But you need to step away from that now and move on. Is that a difficult thing for a coach? Well, it's a fine line for your team. How much do you allow them to enjoy what they've accomplished and for how long? And then how quickly can you refocus them back on the task at hand? Because both teams should have championship aspirations. This is not an upset either way, whoever wins this series. During the regular season, they played each other twice. Celtics winning both games, but they were all before January 1st, really meaningless, especially because that was before the Gasol trade. Both teams so different from they were early in the season. Rajon Rondo, this is his first shot, the young point guard. And Kobe Bryant, the rebound, the MVP's regular season MVP. What a spectacular he had, Mark. What impressed you most about Kobe Bryant this season? Well, what impressed me most is the way he trusted his teammates on both ends of the floor. You're only as good as the guys around you. He made them better, but the commitment that they had entering to the gym early and leaving late really sold that message to him. Ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Odom, and it's going to be Boston ball. He said it's the most fun he's had all year. Second in the league in scoring during the regular season. Of course, he's won three titles. His Laker team lost in 2004. You have a big key in this whole series is how do you defend Kobe Bryant? Well, I think what you try to do is you try to take away the easy stuff. You take away the layup. You try to take away the free throw. You try to make him a volume jump shooter. Kevin Garnett, who was one of the better jump shooters of big men in NBA history, knocks that one down. And Fisher throws it in. And we talked about the stars, but... Some of the other support players so critical, and Derek Fisher's one of those. Paul Pierce, his three-pointer won't go. Garnett keeps it alive, tips it out. Allen, wide open three. Garnett, another rebound. <laughs> Rondo doing a little Harlem Globetrotters action. Well, you can tell Kevin Garnett already fired up early, knocks down the jump, and then keeps the ball alive twice on the offensive board. Kendrick Perkins out to Rondo, but threw it behind him, and a turnover. And I think a surprising matchup. Gasol is guarding Garnett. Odom is guarding Kendrick Perkins. So much made about who's going to guard Kobe Bryant. Now, Manovich pass deflected in stone. Ray Allen has it taken back. Bryant has had a terrific defensive year as well, in addition to his usual offensive excellence. Odom knocks down the shot. Lamar Odom having one of his best seasons. Lakers a good road team during the regular season. They've won four road games, including wins in San Antonio and in Utah in the first couple of rounds. They have a whistle and a defense of three seconds. Doc Rivers now in his fourth year as head coach. After last year's disaster, they won 24 games total, had an 18-game losing streak. Worst talk about his job security, but he has done an unbelievable job with the talent that was acquired, obtaining Garnett from Minnesota. Allen from Seattle and making guys believe about sacrificing for the sake of the team. And one thing Doc Rivers said during the course of the year, he felt 
his job did not change last year when they struggled as a franchise and a team to this year. It's just a difference of having quality players. You get Kevin Garnett, your stars buy in, and they set the environment. Pierce has Radmanovich on him. That's an interesting matchup. Radmanovich falls behind, and Pierce with a nice move to the basket. And Pierce's ball handling ability, particularly running pick and roll, has improved dramatically from when he first came into the NBA. And Fisher is fouled. Pierce hit him. We'll see if it's a three-point attempt. We'll go to the line. I believe it's two. And this is Pierce. The Lakers are trying to force it to the baseline. Does a great job with his hesitation dribble and then finishes through a lot of arms. Could have been a three-point play. And I like the adjustment also by Doc Rivers, recognizing that they double-teamed Paul Pierce on the catch on his initial play on the block. All of a sudden, you change, put the ball in his hands, and have him facing the, the defense of the Lakers as opposed to on the block. Fisher to the line when you talk about finals experience. Fisher certainly has that. He won three championships with the Lakers in 2000. In 01 and 02, was on the team that lost in 04 as well. And he was the third leading scorer on those championship teams behind Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. He's a big time playoff performer. Oh, I'm convinced that the acquisition of, of getting Derek Fisher back was just as crucial, if not more important, than getting Kyle Gasol. If you upgrade from Smurf Parker to Derek Fisher, a big time guy that's willing to take and make big shots. He, he makes a difference in the locker room and on the floor. But he misses a couple of free throws, and he's normally an excellent free throw shooter. Ray Allen kicks it out. Rondo wide open. He'll have those looks and puts it in. Rajon Rondo, the young guard out of the University of Kentucky. He's had his ups and downs as a starting point guard for contender, but he's also made some huge big plays for them in the playoffs. Radmanovich knocks down a two-pointer. I like the way that Rondo is coming out. He understands how he's going to be played. He's taking two early shots, but looking to be aggressive. Give him credit. Young fellas in the finals. He's done his job. Garnett with the soul on him. Kevin Garnett off the mark. Perkins puts it back up. Looked like he got hit, and he did. Hard to hear the whistle. This place is loud. And Kendrick Perkins will go to the line. Radmanovich is first. First one of the stories, Phil Jackson. Can he pass the late great Red Auerbach and get his 10th NBA championship as a head coach? You know, when we think, guys, about this series, it'd be nice. I mean, as we said, Red Auerbach, the late great, his name is now here on the new parquet floor, winning those nine NBA titles. You know he's watching. You think about other players like the late Dennis Johnson. The announcers like Johnny Most and Chick Hearn, those guys, you think about all those great people that were involved. I and mean, what is, without question, the most storied rivalry in the history of the NBA, despite the fact that they haven't played in the finals for 21 years. Really an incredible story. The foul of the soul catches the law pass and finishes it at the rim. But you talk about great stories, you talk about history, and at the end of the day, 31 out of 62 championships will be the Lakers and the Celtics. Garnett misses. Everybody in the Lakers has scored except for Bryant. He likes to do that. It's been part of his game plan this year. Gets his teammates involved early. Takes over in the second half. Radmanovich, long three. Short. He thought he got hit. And here comes Ray Allen. Garnett aggressive looking for a shot early. Gets inside and the finish. Kevin Garnett has changed the culture here in Boston in his first year. And as you would expect with somebody who plays so hard, he's become such a fan favorite with the Celtic fans. Rondo on Bryant. Ball kicked on the pass. Still Laker ball. They'll reset the shot clock to 14. You just sense how fired up Kevin Garnett is. Knocks down a jump and then grown man move. Put the ball on the floor. Attack the rim. That's a matchup that the Celtics and Garnett have to dominate. And I would agree with that. Garnett's passion has to overcome Hal Gasol's great skill set in this series for the Boston Celtics to win. Allen on Brian. Good defense from Ray Allen. Tough shot. Fight for the rebound, Radmanovich. At least in the early minutes, this officiating crew is letting him play. They're banging pretty good down low. Bryant falling away. In and out. And Pierce the rebound.
Here's spinning. Tough shot. And does not get the roll. Odom throws it ahead. Here's Gasol going in on him. All the Lakers have done since they acquired Gasol is win. As Garnett is called for his first foul. And we'll have our first timeout as we just passed the midway point of the opening quarter. See both teams beginning to feel themselves. Powell Gasol's point to the rim. Put it upstairs. Good job of catching it with one hand and then finishing it off the glass. And how about Kevin Garnett? Your stars have to play big when the finals show up. Garnett attacking the rim. My goodness. Finals on ABC, brought to you by Dockers, Work, Weekend, Dress, Golf, Sprite with Lyman, and You Don't Mess with the Zohan, in theaters everywhere tomorrow, rated PG-13. Welcome back to Boston, game one of the NBA Finals, all tied up midway through the first for the Celtics. What a year it's been, 66 wins, best record in the NBA. And then the playoffs started against the 37 win team Atlanta Hawks. They needed seven games lost all three on the road in Atlanta second round same scenario lost all three in Cleveland but a 41 point performance from Paul Pierce in game seven got them to the conference finals and then finally in the conference finals they won not one but two road games to defeat the Detroit Pistons and here they are Paul Pierce has been tremendous in all the closeout games. And ironically, after the great feeling, when they struggled the first two rounds against in Atlanta and Cleveland, a lot of doubt creeped in here in Boston about their ability to win a championship. It almost seemed like when they finally got to Detroit, it was a sigh of relief. They were fighting against a team that they had tremendous respect for and realized that if they didn't bring the A game, they could be home. Found a way to get it done and find themselves in the championship round. The players believe, but the fans started to get skeptical with the struggles on the road, especially in that series against the eight seeded Atlanta Hawks. Odom shot won't go over the backboard out of bounds. Those series just show you the fine line there is between winning and achieving a great season like the Celtics have or going out in the second round. They could have easily lost game seven at home to Cleveland and LeBron James when he scored the 45 points. The one thing I say about the importance of the regular season, they earned the right in both of those early rounds, whether it be Atlanta or Cleveland, to play a deciding game in their own building. And that's where they're so tough. Garnett up and under, blocked by Odom, but a goal 10. Two points for Kevin Garnett. The Celtics here at home, 10 and 1 during the playoffs. The lone loss was game two against the Pistons. Their defense has just been unbelievable on their home floor. So O'Brien easing himself into the game. There you see the regular season, you see the defensive numbers. Kobe Bryant rattles in his first field goal. Bryant receiving a nice healthy dose of booze when he was introduced. And a foul on Radmanovich. Two fouls on Vladimir Radmanovich, so he's going to have to come out. This is a basic triangle cut where he read came to the free throw line and usually in that situation he tries to shot fake and get guys up off their feet but on a previous possession Ray Allen had done a great job staying down Kobe Bryant just raises over the top and Mike I think a, fa a fans in another town should treat it just the opposite with Kobe Bryant I would stand up and cheer him <laughs> try to give him a different look oh he absolutely loves when the fans come after him on the road Sasha Vujicic has come in for Radmanovic, part of what's been a very good Laker bench all season. Garnett's jump shot. Kevin Garnett off to a good start. Eight points here in the first quarter. And you see what the Lakers are doing now. Kobe Bryant defends Paul Pierce, gets on the block. They trap immediately with the big being Lamar Odom, but a good job of getting rid of the basketball and Garnett staying aggressive. And again, they're going to leave Rondo open, and it's up to him. Like right there, he made a play to Garnett. Quick decision, hit him with a little skip pass for the jump shot. Gasol, the shot. And Pau Gasol, who came over in that trade from Memphis back in February. In his first six and a half years with the Grizzlies, never won a playoff game there in three years and three trips to the playoffs. Now here playing in the NBA Finals. 
Rondo, nice ball fake. Can't finish, ball batted around. And Derek Fisher can't control it, throws it ahead. And a backcourt violation. That was close. I don't know if that's the right call. I thought Gasol's feet were on the half-court stripe, so he had every right to throw it in the backcourt. Both feet and the ball have to be across half-court for it to be a backcourt violation. Let's take a look. Nope, that shouldn't have been. You have to have both feet on the ball to get into the front court. Rondo, ball deflected out of bounds. Right here to me, they got to keep posting Kevin Garnett. They've got to keep going at Gasol. If Gasol makes jump shots at the other end, you're in trouble unless you put him under deep defensive pressure and make him guard on successive possessions. And you make a good point. I think you have to realize who's on fire, who has come out ready to play, and find that man. Ray Allen, nice move. Allen has had a roller coaster ride in these playoffs. Started off hot, then went through one of the worst slumps of his career. Found his game late in the Piston series. Pierce now on Kobe Bryant. Bryant won't go, and he's one for five. But those are the shots you want him taking. Contested two-point jump shots. Allen hits a three. Ray Allen nails one, and the Celtics go up by five. And Phil Jackson wants timeout. A nine-point turnaround after trailing by four. Boston now up 19-14. Well, Ray Allen just rolling here, moving off a of stagger street, catches it on the curl, good use of his body, hangs and banks it in, and then pick and roll. Good screen by Perkins, a little air space, and just knocks in the three-point shot. Just over three minutes remaining. First quarter of game one of the NBA Finals from Boston. And the Celtics, after trailing by four, now lead by five. Here before this sellout crowd in Boston, of course, Kobe Bryant's going to be the main focus of the defense. So far, he's one for five, Mark. Is it a matter of he's getting good shots, or are they just defending him well? Well, these are makeable shots by Kobe Bryant. We've seen him make these shots, but give the Celtics credit. They're making him a jump shooter and contesting those shots. All right, time to welcome in the other member of our broadcast team, of course, it's Michelle Tafoya. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Michael. As these teams face long days today, waiting to play, both coaches found messages to keep their teams occupied. Phil Jackson talked about preparedness, and he said you can't be completely prepared for an opponent until you meet on the court. So if we fall behind, that does not limit our energy or effectiveness. Doc Rivers used the fact that people are picking the Lakers to win, and he told his Celtics there are always going to be questions about our team, about me you can't control those questions but you can control your play Mike all right Michelle and as Ray Allen drives Rondo gets a nice feed Rondo inside and draws the foul on Priyachich as he goes down hard Rondo showing some good aggressiveness in the early minutes showing a lot of life a lot of confidence moving without the basketball putting himself in position that when he catches it he can attack does a good job of cutting to the hoop and then looking to attack the rim over Vujicic creating the contact and going to the line but this is how you look to finish championship basketball Rondo who was three and a half months old the last time the Celtics won a championship is now their starting point guard with a chance to help put up the 17th championship banner all season long he's been a question with fans with the media about can they win a title with him in the point guard we've seen some terrific moments for him we've seen some flaws at times but overall what have you seen Jeff this year from him well I, like you said Mike he's been up and down but when you're the starting point guard on the 66 win team you have no need to apologize I like the fact that in this game he's come out with offensive aggression when they start to double team off of him. Jordan Farmar, speaking of young players, Farmar part of that energy filled bench. Farmar also in his second year. Both Farmar and Rondo, two very confident young players. Pierce gets it inside. Perkins swatted from behind. Gasol with the block. 
and they're double teaming Pierce just like San Antonio would, coming from the low man on the baseline side, which is an unusual double team. Most teams double team from the top of key, top of the key area. Vujicic way outside, hits a three. Sasha Vujicic, top ten in the NBA during the regular season from downtown. He's hit some big shots in the playoffs as well. Rondo calling out the play. I got to play post Garnett. <laughs> Rondo gets inside. And he slipped, it looked like. And they call the traveling. So the Celtics with their fourth turnover. Well, here's Paul Pierce posting up mid post area. Bryant jumps on the top side. Here comes Odom on the baseline side. Good play by Pierce. Good read by Perkins. Better block by Gasol from behind. Oh, a good job by the help defenders of the Lakers. You realize that no longer is Perkins Odom's man, so they do a good job of helping the help. More subs ready to get in. P.J. Brown set to check in. James Posey has entered the game for Boston. Bryant for three. In and out. Just can't get it to fall. Another good look, but he's one for seven. Perkins calling for it. Alley oop to Garnett. And he couldn't control it. Here come the Lakers. And a foul before the shot. They're not in the penalty yet with 122 remaining. Next one. Garnett had point blank range on this one. Good read by Rondo. Good backdoor cut by Kevin Garnett. Just not able to finish at the rim, but excellent execution. And Phil Jackson was irate about Posey fouling even harder after the initial foul in transition on Bryant. Garnett gets his first rest. Bryant inside and gets it to go. Kobe Bryant getting his first MVP. That's for the regular season. Seven straight points now by the Lakers. We're tied up again and an offensive foul. Ball against Boston. It's going to be James Posey with a moving screen. Doc Rivers obviously disagrees. Of course, the uh, format for these finals 2 3 2. Game two right back here in Boston on Sunday. Our coverage begins at 8 30 p.m. GMC NBA countdown. And then tip off shortly after 9 o'clock. First two games in Boston, then the next three in Los Angeles at the Staples Center. Final minute, first quarter. Gasol. Vujicic, the fake, fires away, way off the mark. He's not hesitant, that's for sure. Not shy about shooting. And there's Posey. Posey, one of only two players with a championship ring on the Celtics. Sam Cassell, the backup point guard, the other one. P.J. Brown inside. Brown banks it in. I think there's a dent in the backboard, but it still went down. Well, you look at the Celtic team they have on the floor. It's a very limited offensive team. Only Ray Allen is truly an accomplished offensive player. Doc Rivers Rib understanding that, ready to insert Sam Cassell into the ballgame. Kobe Bryant looks up at the shot clock. Got a three and a half second difference between that and the game clock. Gasol, two on the shot clock, makes his move. Blocked by Perkins. Perkins quick outlet final seconds Rondo it'll count if it goes and Posey trying to tip it in as the first quarter comes to an end Kevin Garnett finally getting his first chance to play in an NBA Finals came out fired up eight points four rebounds same for Pau Gasol who has helped turn things around for the Lakers game one first quarter complete Celtics with a two-point advantage trail by just two but Phil Jackson your star Kobe Bryant two for eight so far from the field how are the Celtics slowing him down well, I think he just missed shots although they face guard a couple times which is good 
uh, good contesting, but he missed some shots or in and out. He's okay. You talked before the game about not being truly prepared to meet a team or to, to play a team until you actually meet for a few minutes on the floor. What do you make of the first 12 minutes? Well, everybody's feeling each other out. The referees are trying to understand what the contests are going to be in the game, how physical it's going to be. And you can see the anxiety of both the teams. They're playing a little bit out of whack. We'll get it. We'll get it going. Thank you, Phil. Mike? Yeah, Michelle, Phil Jackson has talked about his team's resiliency, and that's what he's most proud of this year. It was a season that began. It could have been a recipe for disaster. Well documented. Kobe Bryant asking to be traded, wanted out, didn't like the direction of the team. General manager Mitch Kupchak and owner Jerry Buss saying that they would look into it. They did. And they decided not to trade him. There's no way they'd get equal value for him. Allen goes to the basket, misses. And then Kobe Bryant settled himself down. Leon Poe shot, banks it in. Bryant settled himself down. They got great play from young Andrew Bynum. He got hurt. They brought in Gasol. And it's just an amazing turnaround. What, what could have been a disastrous season, Jeff. Well, yeah. I mean, the whole key was getting Pal Gasol for virtually nothing. And that changed their whole perspective for winning a championship, especially with Bynum going out with a season-ending injury. And there's Bynum on the bench. They hope to have him back next year. Terrific young player who was really progressing prior to that knee injury back in January. Sam Cassell in the game. Cassell and P.J. Brown, the third and fourth oldest players in the league this year, both at 38. Both picked up late in the season to help in this playoff push. Shot clock at two. Allen has to hoist it up. Almost puts it in. Oh, the rebound. But a whistle and a loose ball foul. It's going to go against Luke Walton. As both coaches have gone to the benches, right now on the floor for the Celtics, it's Pierce, Cassell, P.J. Brown, Posey, and Leon Poe. The Lakers have Roni Turiaf, Walton, Vujicic, Fisher and Odom so a lot of bench players getting early minutes I was surprised Phil Jackson went back to Derek Fisher right away to start this second quarter after only three and a half minutes on the floor by Farmer there's Pierce P.J. Brown left open the veteran not that time and Walton the rebound and you can tell the Lakers are locked into not allowing Paul Pierce to establish a rhythm every time he catches his own block it's a double team Here's Turiak, jump shot over Brown, and Pierce the rebound. And we heard Phil Jackson talk about the officials and figuring out they are letting him play early. Cassell forces up the jumper and knocks it down. He won two championships his first two years with the Houston Rockets. Been to a bunch of conference finals, and now he's back in the NBA finals and could be a big part of what the Celtics need to do. And talking to Doc Rivers, he says, hey, I have big plans for Sam Cassell. He is a guy that we are going to use in this series. It's a much better matchup for him. He's not facing Lindsey Hunt in the ball pressure with the Pistons. And Odom draws the foul as he goes to the line. You're talking about Sam Cassell. You're talking about a big-time scorer, a guy that's not afraid of the moment, does a good job of putting Derek Fisher on his hip and then getting to his spot, releasing with that pretty jump shot. So Cassell quickly gets on the board as and, Odom will shoot two. And right there, Poe made a mistake. You have to take away the left-hand drive of Lamar Odom. Give him an extra cushion. Make him shoot jump shots. He's too good driving and finishing and also making plays off the dribble. Odom's such a huge part of the Lakers' success. He's had one of his best years and he misses the free throw. Seems like he's been around forever, but he's only 28 years old. He's always been involved in trade rumors. He, of course, is one of the players they acquired from Miami in the trade for Shaquille O'Neal. And he's had his bumps along the way, but one of the most versatile players in the NBA. And people don't understand how good this young man is. A tough matchup night in and night out because of his size. He's a big-time rebounder, but can handle the ball like a point guard. Just to make you feel good, he's another New York City kid. I was going to say that, but I, I just decided to leave it alone. For the Queens, <laughs> is a foul on Fisher. So Derek Fisher picks up his first. Second team foul here in the second quarter. And they shoot on the 15th foul. You know, they just showed behind Phil Jackson, Tex winner. He's 80 years old. He looks better than I do at 46. <laughs> that guy looks great. One of the great coaches who has spent his life in the NBA. Cassell looking for his shot and hitting it. He's had some struggles in the playoffs, especially on the road, but a good spark off the bench here in game one. 
you see the, di the difference with the defense that Lindsey Hunter puts on Cassell as opposed to Derek Fisher. Cassell comfortable with banging with Fisher and getting him to his spot. Walton. Odom, the offensive rebound. Back up and won't get it to go. Cole pulls it down. Pierce looking for an opening. Paul Pierce. And Boyacic grabs it. Three minutes gone by here in the second. Celtics lead by five. Posey on Fisher. Fisher to the basket. And he's fouled by P.J. Brown. And we'll have a timeout. The benches certainly will be important in this series. And Sam Cassell starting off well for the Celtics. He sure is, and they need this offense. Here, he's a very underrated low post player. We're going to the ultra mode. Turn around to his right shoulder. Fade away, jumper. Celtics up five. I've been fortunate enough to be at the top of the mountain before and uh, to have to go through struggles in the years uh, following that. And now I'm finding myself back in a position you know, to put my arms around it again. It feels fantastic. And Kobe Bryant has put his team in position for another championship. His coach, Phil Jackson, says he's put the whole package together this year. The scoring, obviously. He's rededicated himself to defense, the leadership. It has been a special season. That's why he won the MVP, and that's why they're in this position right now. And it's starting to happen again, Mark. The conversation, the debate on is he as good as Michael Jordan? It's been blasphemy to say it really about anybody, but it's an actual discussion you can have now. Well, I said it a year and a half ago. No way in the world would I ever put anybody in the conversation with Michael Jordan. But Kobe Bryant is there. He's as good as Michael Jordan on any given day. I said to Bryant yesterday, it's almost like Larry Holmes and Muhammad Ali. He looked at me and said, I'm not Larry Holmes. And he is 100% right. It is two Muhammad Ali's when you talk about Jordan and Bryant. Meanwhile, a foul on Turiaf. That's his first. I just worry about how he was cradling that trophy. <laughs> he looked like an ex a proud father. That was so emotional. It's been a while since he held one. Their last championship back in 2002. Of course, he's still a little bit behind. Those three championships with Shaquille O'Neal. But after O'Neal was traded the following year, they didn't make the playoffs. Then they've lost in the first round each of the last two seasons. But he's put them on his back right now. And this whole team, every guy in the team thinks that he's better than he is because they're playing with Kobe Bryant. And he's instilled them with that confidence. Cassell. I think he shot the ball every time he's touched it, but that's a good thing for the Celtics. He's three for three. Well, Sam Cassell is a guy that knows when he's feeling it on any given night. Right now, he is offensive. To give Derek Fisher credit, he is a guy that's not afraid. He's not going to back down. Comes back down and knocks down a jump. Fisher, seven points. He leads them in the scoring. And the Celtics have made bad mistakes on Bujicic and Fisher, giving them too much airspace. Wide open three. Pierce blocked, but a foul. Turiaf rejected it. He's raising his hand. He doesn't want the foul call on Gasol. So Turiaf picks up his second personal. Again, Cassell in the post. He's always going to turn to his right shoulder. Uses his right shoulder to get a little separation, knock Fisher back, and knock in the jump shot. So the free throw for Paul Pierce. Pierce, who grew up in Inglewood, which of course was home of the LA Forum, and as a kid said he hated the Celtics. Said the guy that he hated the most was Danny Ainge, who's now his boss here in Boston. And uh, like a lot of kids out there, Rooted for the Lakers. Ainge, of course, who pulled off the big trades, was the NBA Executive of the Year. Won titles here as a player with the Celtics. He doesn't hate him anymore. In fact, he hugged him the day that he found out that Ainge acquired Kevin Garnett. That gives Ainge a lot of credit for turning this thing around here, but as a basketball player, he was an outstanding player and a phenomenal competitor. He was one of those that got under the skin of opponents and the opposing fans, that's for sure. Turiaf knocks down the jumper. Only Turiaf off the bench with a nice spark. 
It's amazing when you look at Ronnie Terrell and you realize what this young man has been through. An incredible story. An open heart surgery a couple of years ago. Now he's playing in the NBA Finals. Garnett on the drive. And he's fouled by Turiaf. So Turiaf will pick up his third. He had that open heart surgery back in the summer of 2006. He was drafted by the Lakers, and in his physical, they noticed there was a problem. And they told him he had to have it because before the surgery, his life would have been in jeopardy on a daily basis, according to doctors. Had the six hour operation, cracked open his chest, his heart stopped for two hours. The surgery was successful. He said a couple of months after that, life was very difficult. Couldn't tie his own shoes, couldn't dress himself as he tried to recover. But amazingly, about six months later, he signed a new contract with the Lakers, started working out, and here he is again, one of the most energetic players in the NBA. If I'm coaching, I want this young man on my team. You're talking about his passion, his desire, his energy that he brings every single day is unmatched. I want to correct myself, that last foul on Gasol, not Turiaf, so he still has two. Gasol picks up his first, and Garnett hits the free throw to give the Celtics a three-point lead. Saul Bryant gets it on the pull-up. Kobe Bryant with his third field goal. And you see what the Lakers do. Put Kobe Bryant on Sam Cassell. Fisher on Posey. So you make the adjustment getting the bigger, longer Bryant on Cassell. Garnett, the pull-up. Drills that jumper. Such a good shooter for a big man. He's one of the best big man jump shooters of all time. And he can go to work on Gasol at any time. Post, perimeter, wherever you put him. Paul Pierce commits the foul. And this catch by Garnett was difficult. It knocked him off, so he had to face him up, go off the dribble. Gasol, because he had the quickness disadvantage, gave him a cushion. And Garnett rose up to what he wants to do, which is shoot the jump shot. Garnett, you see his playoff numbers have been terrific. His team, the Timberwolves, did not make the playoffs the last three years. He was so pumped up to get back into the postseason. And, of course, now his first trip to the finals. And I couldn't believe when people said this guy is not a winner because he hasn't won. He is a, as, as much a winner as we've seen in this league. You're talking about getting it done, passion on a daily basis, defensively, energy, and a tremendous lead. All you can do is maximize yourself, and he has maximized himself as a player. Ball knocked out of bounds, last touch by Fisher. That last foul on Boston was on Pierce, so he has two. With 6.34 remaining here in the second. Doc Rivers has loved what Pierce has done defensively as much as offensively. Done an excellent job on LeBron James during much of the Cavs series in the second round. Pierce, nice pass, Garnett blocked by Gasol. And they're going to call a foul. Yep. Dick Favetta blows the whistle. And Gasol picks up his second. Ooh. Well, Terry, Terry F hit him, but after Gasol looked like he had a clean block. Well, that's not a foul. Kevin Garnett got away with one and going to the line, but good defense by Gasol. People underestimate. His length, he is very long, got great timing. That's a clean block by Pau Gasol. Garnett was saying yesterday he felt Gasol was one of the most underrated players in the league and said he was much better defensively than he's given credit for. I don't know if he's just saying that to be nice before the playoffs yeah. or the series. That's a throwaway line right there. That's a politically <laughs> correct line. I'm not sure about that one. You never use any of those in your NBA days. Oh, hey, you got to know what to say. Gasol left-handed at that time called the rebound. Coming up on the midway point of the second quarter. Pretty quick pace to this game. Garnett again. Kevin Garnett. The last eight Celtic points. He has 16 here in the first half. Hole guarding Gasol stolen by Pierce, but he couldn't control it. And that's the type of defensive effort these fans have seen from the Celtics all season long. 
the best defensive team in the NBA in the regular season. They've been the best in the playoffs as well. And it all starts with Kevin Garnett. Well, on the defensive end, good job of battling Pau Gasol, getting him off of his sweet spot, contests the left-handed hook shot, not able to knock it down, then forget about the offense, find the hot hand. KG says, everybody get out of my way. It's time to dance. The intensity of Kevin Garnett, Doc Rivers says it's rare that your best player is your number one energy player. That's the case with Garnett. It's the most storied rivalry in NBA history. And this is the 11th time the Celtics and the Lakers will meet in the finals. Boston won the first eight. Lakers won the last two. And this one back in 1987. And as Mark Jackson said earlier, 30 titles in the 61 years of the NBA. And so many great names, so many names in the Raptors here at the New Garden. I mean, the greatest names that have ever played this game, part of this rivalry over the years. Some pretty good ones in this series as well. Cassell trying to go. Offensive foul. How about Sam Cassell drawing a charge? I just fainted. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Cassell, defensive player of the year. <laughs> Cassell at 38, not known for his defense. He is fired up. A big spark in the first half. Garnett could sell a three. And Radmanovic hands it off to Fisher. Garnett does not go for the fake. Such a sound fundamental defensive player as Ray Allen fouls Kobe Bryant. Celtics not in the penalty. Reminder to log on to NBA.com now to bid in the 2008 NBA Finals auction featuring Lakers and Celtics jerseys worn in game one of these finals NBA auctions your chance to own a piece of NBA history well they call it the act of shooting so Kobe Bryant will go to the line Ray Allen's first personal a smart play by Bryant realizes that the, the body movement of Ray Allen forced the contact and got it up rather than put it on the floor and yeah. a smart play taking advantage of the Kobe stopper Cassell not being on it <laughs> He's getting a breather from Sam I am. Here's Brian hits the second. You see Kobe Bryant still with the bandage on that pinky finger on his shooting hand. He tore ligaments in it back in February. Opted not to have surgery as Pierce gets inside. Offensive foul on Pierce. That's three on Paul Pierce. Doc Rivers saying, wait a minute, he was in the restricted area. So Pierce is going to have to come out with 5-14 remaining here in the second. And that's the first player from either team with three fouls. No, he was outside the restricted area. If you're Doc Rivers, the reason why you kept Pierce in with the two fouls, you were not worried about him defending Rachmanovich or Luke Walton. The only concern was him picking up an offensive foul, which just occurred. Perkins pokes it away. Again, just to finish on Brian, he still may need surgery on that pinky. Nice pass to Gasol. It certainly hasn't affected his play in the playoffs. Decided not to have it. They're going to wait and see. He still hopes to play for Team USA in the Olympics this summer and might have surgery after that. When you think about that play by Brian and Gasol, the last possession. That's a play made famous by Larry Bird and Robert Parrish. Former great self. Posey for three. You recognize the pick and roll and how you defend it. As soon as the big guy gets on your body, your job as a big man is to dive to the hoop. Good read by Bryant and Gasol. And Gasol's got great hands. We saw it in the first quarter when he caught the lob with one hand there. Great slip. Posing it. Terrific play. Now goes down the other end. Couldn't handle a pass. Rondo heard some footsteps, lost it. Fisher comes out with it. Now let's see what the call is. Dick Pavetta checking with Eddie Rush is going to be a foul on Posey. Or is it Posey? Maybe it's Ray Allen. It's Ray Allen. That's his second. 
So Allen with two of the Celtics in the penalty. The hustle by Rotmanovic, not allowing Posey to get the easy one. And then both guys are attacking the loose ball, ready to sacrifice their body. And that's where they, they call the foul on Allen. That was more on Posey. He's just trying to cover himself there as Fisher will go back to the line. Now Fisher knocks down the first, so fouls have become an issue for Paul Pierce. He's got three. Pierce just one of four to start. Lakers now 9 of 12 from the line. They've scored six in a row, and they're back on top after trailing by seven. Fisher, the leading score for the Lakers with 11. Rondo looking for Garnett. There's the double. Dangerous pass. Shot clock down to five. Ray Allen kicks it out. Rondo, that's a two-pointer. Puts it in. He's not hesitating tonight. They doubled off him hard for the first time on Garnett's post-up. He gave it up once, Rondo did. Nice pick and roll again. Very poor pick and roll coverage tonight by the Celtics. But Rondo gave it up at the other end, got it back another time, and hit the nice pull-up to his left. One of the reasons why the Lakers' best offensive team in the playoffs passing like that, they have 12 assists on their 16 field goals, shooting 50% from the field. Allen inside, misses. And all of the rebound. Fisher looking. Odom takes Perkins off the dribble. Pretty move from Odom with that long stride. We talk about the ability of Odom. That's Perkins trying to close out against a 6'10, 6'11 skilled guy. And Odom puts the ball on the floor and attacks the paint area. Doc Rivers calls timeout. Lakers on a 10 to 2 run. Offensively very efficient, Mark. You're talking about a big guy that has the package. Odom able to get to the scene of the Celtic defense. What a pretty finish. Off the glass, gets the roll. 51% from the field, only four turnovers, and they're up by three. Coming up at halftime, the T-Mobile Halftime Report. There will be a special guest joining Stuart Scott, John Barry, and Michael Wilbon. And the great Magic Johnson will help them analyze the first half and, of course, talk about the Lakers-Celtics rivalry, which he, of course, was a part of. That hook shot back in game four in, in 87. Last time they faced off in the finals, Lakers won that in six games that series. Posey to Garnett. Pass to Posey, can't finish. Perkins keeps it alive. Rodmanovich tips it out of bounds. Last touch by Boston. And now we'll have a full timeout as we get under the three minute mark. A little roller coaster ride as the Lakers now, after trailing by seven, up by three. The NBA Finals on ABC. Brought to you by Universal Pictures, The Incredible Hulk, in theaters everywhere June 13th. Vitamin Water, it works for Kobe Bryant, try it. And GMC, we are professional grade. Been 21 years since the finals are in Boston, so it's a tough ticket. And of course, the celebrities show up. Bruce Willis, James Taylor is saying, the national anthem tonight. Ellen Pompeo from Gray's Anatomy. And of course, a number of the football players here from the Patriots, Randy Moss among them. But there's the real celebrities. They look very distinguished in Gray. You know, we get all fired up about guy has a double double. How about Bill Russell? 62, game seven of the finals, 30 points, 40 rebounds. Now there's a double double. I tell you what, I can put together a five in this building that would face any five that's ever played this game. We talk about Magic at the one, Kobe Bryant at the two, Dr. J at the three, KG at the four, and Bill Russell at the five. Havlicek coming off the bench, too. And My Van God. Gundy coach. Rondo. <laughs> oh, that was nice. But hey, Mike, before we came on, he get 
Magic, I could be the point guard of that team. <laughs> Don't buy that humility. Hey, Magic Johnson's the best to ever play the point guard position, and it's not close. Odom, open jump shot. Lamar Odom with seven Odom. points. Lakers back up by three. He hit the two minute mark. This is a high shooting percentage against the best defensive team, Jeff. What's going on? Well, it's a great offensive team. That's number one. But I don't think their pick and roll coverage has been what it normally is. I think everybody's open. They haven't taken the roll away. Radnovich, quick pass, Bryant. Nice feed to Gasol, and he got hit by Perkins. So Perkins picks up his first, and more free throws for Powell Gasol. What do you think about that? That's a wide open jump shot by Kobe Bryant. Turns it down, gets the high percentage shot, getting another guy involved offensively, hands the ball up to Gasol, and he's going to the line. But the patience of Bryant and trusting his teammates, it doesn't stop. Oh, a year ago, or in the past, this is a jump shot that Bryant is not going to turn down. Bates, Kevin Garnett to come out, and then finds Gasol, getting other guys established. Yeah, but last year, that was Kwame Brown. So there's a big difference in talent. You get trusted when you can produce. Bryant trusts Gasol. He's got great hands. He can finish, and he can make free throws. I think it would have been the right play to pass up Kwame Brown to shoot that if he was still playing with him. And Lakers have their largest lead here in the first half, up by five, minute and a half remaining in the second. Rondo with the turnover. That's the eighth for Boston. Bryant with Posey on him this time. He's seen a host of defenders already. Odom, Bryant, up and under, won't go. Tip, Posey knocks it. Rondo able to track it down. Coming up on a minute remaining in the first half. Rondo, open jumper, puts it in. How about Rondo? Four of seven from the field, 10 points, three assists. Defense, defense, defense. Back out, Fisher, another jumper. Fisher, again. He has the third highest field goal percentage in the history of the finals. Plays big in these huge games. And Phil Jackson playing him a lot of minutes in this first half. You're Rondo, you're doing a good job offensively, but you can't have missed assignments against Fisher defense. 13 points for Fisher, Lakers by five. Ray Allen to Posey. Posey, a good three-point shooter. Not that time. And Fisher the rebound, and the Lakers will hold it for the final shot of the period. Grab a little quiet. Ryan has not erupted. He's just three of ten from the field, but the rest of the team shooting extremely well. Radmanovich, open three. Ray Allen's got some time. Half court, that'll count if it goes. Oh, that well, was close, just off the mark. And that will end the first half of game one. Kevin Garnett and the Celtics got off to a big start. Garnett with 16 points. Celtics led by as many as seven. But Derek Fisher and the Lakers turning it around nicely. As Kobe Bryant's Lakers has a five-point lead. And Kobe right now with Michelle. Mike, thank you very much. Kobe, uh, your, your coach said you can't really get to know each other until you spend a few minutes together out here on the floor. So now that you have, what do you make of this first half? Well, you know, it takes us a little while to get used to them. We haven't played them in a long time. We're so unfamiliar with them. It's just a matter of kind of getting a rhythm for what they like to do. And how's the rhythm coming? Oh, it's coming. I, I think we did a much better job there late in the second quarter and, you know, with our ball moving and spacing and reading what the defense does. Thanks, Kobe. You got it. Mike. All right, Michelle, after the break, Stuart Scott, John Barry, Michael Wilbon will have their special guest, Magic Johnson, the T-Mobile Halftime Report. They'll look at the first half, and Magic will talk about this great rivalry between the Lakers and the Celtics. Lakers this year during a regular season, highest-scoring Laker team in 18 years, and they're facing a defensive team but here in the first half they shoot 50 percent from the field 14 assists just four turnovers and after two quarters of game one Lakers have a five-point lead You have to see the adjustments, make the play, 
stop them the first time, get the first score. All right, here we go. Right. Every possession for 48 minutes, we have to play defense, and right now we're not doing that. All right? And it's everybody. It's across the board. We haven't closed either quarter. We had the lead with two minutes left in the first quarter. They closed it out. They closed out the second quarter. Let's close out quarters, and we've got to trust. Doc Rivers and his Celtics down by five halftime of game one of the NBA Finals. Kobe Bryant and his team excellent offensively in those first two quarters. And hi again, everyone. Doc Rivers not happy with his defense in that first half. Mark, you weren't necessarily happy with the offense. Kevin Garnett played really well, but you thought it was an opportunity to have a huge first half. Well, came out aggressive, and that's when you have to recognize who has the hot hand. Get that man the basketball. Kevin Garnett, 6 of 9, 16 points, active on the boards, was in a zone, but they went away from him. Find a way to get him involved and then capitalize with that matchup. Meanwhile, Pau Gasol was involved as Kobe Bryant and Gasol have really team nicely since he was acquired and that's part of our Coors Light cool tracks. Well they're the one of the best pick and roll combinations in the NBA. You look at Bryant coming off the pick and roll. He's scanning the floor. A miscommunication by Posey and Pen, uh, Kendrick Perkins. Who has the roll man? They both initially start over and then leave. That should have been James Posey's rotation. And then Perkins starting to show out early on Bryant. Great read by Gasol to slip to the rim. Again, Posey late in his rotation. Two big mistakes by the Celtics defense. Gasol getting to shine on the big stage as we check in with Michelle Tafoya. Guys, uh, you heard Doc Rivers say that he did not, his team did not close out either college quarter but he did acknowledge to me it hurt them that Paul Pierce was not on the floor his biggest concern though that they're allowing too many uncontested shots guarding shots with their arms down Mike he said that's not like us and he said the Lakers are getting into their offense before the Celtics can set their defense let's see if that changes here early now Michelle Pierce scoring three points in the first half that's not like him either he had three fouls played less than 16 minutes but he scores right away here in the third as Odom misfires, Ray Allen the rebound. As much as Garnett has been the key, Paul Pierce, according to Phil Jackson, is still the heart and soul. Draws the foul, banks it in, and one. Paul Pierce for the chance for a four-point play. And here's what you love about it, Mike. Inside out attack. Gets the ball to Garnett, sets up the defense, and then step back, gets the contact from Ramonovich, knocks down the basket. It's late, but the bank is open, and Paul Pierce feeling it early in the third. Pierce had three points in the first half. He has five points in the first 45 seconds of the second half. And that was similar to a play in Detroit, game six, where he was called for an offensive foul. Here, the call went his way. Four-point play. And the crowd back in the game. As the Celtics back on top. They led by as many as seven in the first half. Kobe Bryant knocks down the jumper. So three Celtics, or three Lakers, that is, in double figures. Bryant now with 10. Radmanovich at 6'10. Not a bad defender, but Pierce a little quick for him, and that time Pierce once again knocks it down. And this is the mentality that Paul Pierce has to have. He has to feel no one in a purple jersey can defend him. Comes out aggressive to start this half. Has eight points in a minute 20. Gasol, and he's hacked by Perkins. That's going to be his second. Oh, we talked about it. I'll take great offense over great defense any day of the week. Paul Pierce able to get to his spot and then elevates tremendous lift, avoiding the shot blocking ability of Ramon. And I'll trump that. I'll take great offense off horrible defense, too. And that's what he had going there the last three possessions on Ramon. Bryant with a hand in his face, not that time. Perkins the rebound. Perkins upset, but there should have been a foul. Doc Revers. Yelling at Dick Pavetta as the Celtics come up the floor. It's been a pretty physical game, but they've let them play for the most part. Garnett gets the roll. Celtics up by three. And that's all day, every day in this series. Kevin Garnett has to establish the post position, and they have to seek him with the basketball. And he has to remain aggressive and be selfish looking for a shot. There's a foul call against the Celtics. 
this has been one of the topics, Chip, about Garnett. He's such an unselfish, terrific team player, but he has to take control here. Well, he, he's a very good player. Sometimes your greatest strength is also your greatest weakness. Here, single cover, he can go to work on any Laker in the post, but he plays a great team game, and he's not the classic go-to player. Radmanovic left open, the three-pointer. He's got great range. Vladimir Radmanovic, his second field goal. And what we're witnessing, again, is Kobe Bryant facilitating offense for the guys around him. Dribble penetration and finds Radmanovic. And Radmanovic ball for a foul. That's his fourth in just 15 minutes. Well, in the past, it was taking over games with his offense for himself. Right now, it's about creating offense and allowing the defense to tell him what to do. This time, it's give up the basketball, and he's a willing passer, finding Radmanovic. So Vujicic will come in for Radmanovic. During the regular season, Kobe Bryant averaged, or is Radmanovic upset? Bryant averaging five and a half assists per game. In the playoffs, it's almost six. He said his role has changed on this team. He doesn't have to score 35 a game anymore for them to win. Meanwhile, Garnett continues to dominate. And you can say, well, Kevin Garnett is too unselfish. That's where the other guys on the floor have to say, hey, he has the hot hand. We're going to make him selfish. We're going to give him the basketball. And that's what Pierce did the prior play. 20 points in 23 minutes. Bryant calling for it. Looks up at the shot clock. Pierce guarding in. Kobe Bryant nails it. You get the feeling he's going to shoot a little more now. And to me, they should keep Ray Allen on Bryant and put Pierce on Vujicic. Reach and foul as Pierce went to the basket. Pierce with three fouls is not going to foul him. They want Bryant to go to the middle of the floor. That's an impossible shot to defend. If you're going to make fadeaway jump shots at 17 feet, you're going to win the game. As a way of stopping the bleeding, when the other team gets it going, he's the guy that you give the ball to and he makes play. Pierce knocked it out of bounds. Excellent help defense from Odom. Bryant, an all-NBA first-team defender this year, pokes it away, and it's Laker ball. And I couldn't disagree with that more. I think Bryant plays sporadic great defense, but there's no way to me that he deserved to be a first team all defender when Shane Battier of the Rockets didn't get there. Your former player, in full disclosure. I'm yeah, going with Kobe Bryant. You talk about even in this situation, Paul Pierce gets hot. He says, hey, I have him. Shuts him down for a couple minutes, but making him work. One of the better defenders in the league. Did you watch him? That was a double team. He didn't shut him down. They double teamed because Bryant can't guard Pierce one on one in the post by himself. There's no one in the world, you ask Paul Pierce, that can defend him one on one when he's on his game. What you want is a guy willing to take the challenge of stepping up and making him work. It's about time. You guys have been agreeing too much lately. Meanwhile, that last foul is on Odom, a loose ball foul, so the Celtics will take it out of bounds. Lakers already with four team fouls. I don't like that this guy is sizing me up when he's talking to me. There was a threatening tone. <laughs> don't all eyeball me, boy. <laughs> that was a great movie. Look at all on the steal. Celtics with ten turnovers. Lakers with only four. Bryant spinning. Flips it to Gasol. Oh, nice catch. A highly skilled big man and Al Gasol with 14 points. But he's putting the ball on the floor with the idea of making a play for someone else. That time it was Gasol. Perkins gets it down low, kicks it out to Rondo. Now Ray Allen to the basket. His shot won't go. And Odom able to corral it. To me, all this disjointed offensive play right now is because Rondo can't shoot the ball with rain. So the Lakers feel free to double team and close out short to Rondo. Gasol can't hit Rondo the rebound. Now Rondo shot the ball well so far. He's four of seven. But it's not just a shot attempt. It's what they feel. He can't stretch it to three-point line, so they're going to take the ball out of Garnett's hands, take it out of Pierce's hands with the double team, and live with what Rondo does. Shot clock at four, Garnett, the high release, bank shot won't go, and Gasol the rebound. Gasol said he was re-energized after going from Memphis, one of the worst teams in the NBA, to going to the Lakers. The number one seed in the West this year, Kobe Bryant, knocks it down. Beautiful move, and he's got 16. And down on the floor.
four for the Lakers is Paul Pierce. Eddie Lassert, their longtime head athletic trainer, quickly out there to check on him. Didn't see, he was in the midst of that crowd, exactly what happened. Having that right leg, he looks in some pain. You see, he took a shot from his own teammate Perkins. That arm swung around and knocked Pierce down. And he's hurting right now. Celtic fans holding their breaths here in Boston. Certainly not the sight the Celtics and their fans want to see Paul Pierce in a lot of pain had to be carried off then they put him in the wheelchair as he's going back to the locker room obviously in a lot of pain can't walk off on his own power it appears to be the right leg and it happened in this play in a collision with Kendrick Perkins now watch as Bryant drives to the basket Perkins comes down and it, it looks like Perkins lands on Pierce's leg or his foot and Pierce's leg appeared to get kind of stuck, and sometimes it can twist there. He also came down with the right arm, but it's definitely the right leg. And everybody here in Boston now holding their breath, hoping that Pierce was shaken up. He lay for a while on the floor and then had to be carried off, could not put any weight on it. They brought him in the back, put him on the wheelchair, and now obviously being examined, Michelle Capoy is back there, and as soon as we get an update, we'll pass it along. Garnett, shot won't go. Rebound taken by Bujic. And you can just feel the crowd, how that took the air out of it. Here's the longtime Celtic as Kobe Bryant can hit. The only player left from when Danny Ainge took over. And that looked like in a lot of pain. Rondo to the basket. He draws the foul. Now let's get the first update from Michelle. by the locker room that when Paul Pierce did go into the locker room, he asked to stand on his own power. The doctors were trying to discourage him from doing that. They were saying, look, don't do it. But then he said, let me try it. Let me try it. So he did finally put weight on both legs as he walked back into the locker room. They're taking a look at it now. Danny Ainge, the general manager, back there with him. And we'll have more for you when we can. Mike. All right, Michelle. Pierce, of course, as we mentioned earlier, from Inglewood, grew up as a basketball fan, rooting for the Lakers, hating the Celtics. Waited his whole career to get to the NBA Finals. He has been superb at times here in these playoffs, and you just hope that it's nothing serious and he's going to be able to come back. Now, I like the mentality of the Celtics bench during that timeout. Eddie House, Sam Cassell standing up, encouraging the guys. They have to, you know, don't be discouraged. Find a way to get it done. And a loose ball foul is going to go, I believe, against Rondo. Or is it Perkins? It's Perkins. Now he has four fouls. And three have been in this quarter, and all three have been dubious at best. And now Perkins is limping. So it's quickly turned where the Celtics came out like a house of fire, especially Pierce. And now we're getting banged up here. What a turn of events in just, just a couple of minutes. That's where Perkins has to be more selective with his foul. Perkins is also going back to the locker room with the four fouls. Kobe Bryant on the pull-up. Bryant in and out. Ray Allen the rebound. Allen looking. Drive, strip. And it's still going to be Celtics ball. Celtics ball. Here is the foul on Perkins. I, I don't know where the foul is there. I don't think that's a foul anyway of anything. That's Derek Fisher banging into the body of Perkins. All right, Jeff, as a coach, you see your team, you can see, you can get deflated this way. Your captain goes out with looks like a, a pretty bad injury right now, but we'll wait and see. Now Perkins, it's very easy to get deflated, especially with a young team. Ray Allen open for three, knocks it down. That's a way to end the deflation. Exactly. You've got to have your other players step forward, and you have to have high energy, mentally strong players, which I think the Celtics have. Orem drives, and a blocking foul call on P.J. Brown. 
So Odom will go to the line for two. Second foul on Brown. Tremendous out of bounds play by the Celtics. Poor defense by Vujicic, allowing separation from Ray Allen and trying to shoot the game. And an outstanding screen by P.J. Brown. Recognize that Vujicic trying to cheat the play, puts a body on him and nails. Maybe a little hip check in there, too. Hey, this is championship basketball. Find a way to get a guy an open look. And I expected my prop from you guys. I got Vujicic's name right, even though I almost stumbled mid-sentence. We didn't want to jinx you. We want to keep it going. We're not satisfied with one time. You've done 20 Laker games. <laughs> and I've had 20 different pronunciations, unfortunately. <laughs> we are proud of you. I'm proud of the fact that you didn't go with Sasha. <laughs> yeah. It's been everything from Pujanic <laughs> to Vujacic. Oh, uh, this is the sight that the Celtic fans want to see. And here the ovation as he comes hopping out of the tunnel. P.J. Brown won't go. Rondo nearly tips it in. And Pierce returning with some energy. Fisher on the pull-up. Garnett the rebound, his eighth of the game. All of a sudden, light back in the building. And a foul on Vujicic. Trying to fight over his screen. Lakers in the penalty. Pierce ready to check back into the game as we check in with Michelle. Well, standing back there at the locker room when Paul Pierce came out was a pretty dramatic moment. He was followed out of the hallway by Danny Ainge, the general manager. Ainge told me that it is a sprained knee. You can see that sleeve on Pierce's right knee. He's going to give it a try, guys. Meanwhile, Kendrick Perkins remains in the locker room. All right, Michelle, and Pierce is going to come back in. Pierce has been a very durable player throughout his career, with the exception of last season during that disastrous year. And he had a host of injuries, and now this huge ovation as their captain and leading scorer returns. Now we get a timeout. Pierce has waited a long time to get to the NBA Finals. He's going to make sure he gets back on the floor. NBA Finals on ABC, brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer, and Toyota, moving forward. Back in Boston, game one of the NBA Finals. Paul Pierce, 11 points, but back on the floor after injuring his right knee on this play. He went back to the locker room and Jeff I asked you as a coach what do you do with a team that's deflated when their captain leading scorer is hurt and has to be carried off. Well this is what Doc Rivers said in his huddle right after the injury. What did the guy from South Africa say about adversity. All right. Nothing can get you down. OK. This is what we're talking about adversity. You overcome it. We're the better team. We overcome it, all right? Nothing stops us. That's why we play 12 guys, all right? Let's beat this team. At that point, they only had 10 guys because Pierce and Perkins were back in the locker room. Pierce has since returned. Perkins was still waiting for him to return. And I thought that was an outstanding timeout by Phil Jackson. I think he's the best timeout taker in the NBA. When Pierce came back on the floor, the crowd was about to erupt. He diffused the energy with the timeout. He has a great knack for taking the right timeout at the right time. Kobe Bryant can't get it to go. Pierce the rebound. Ahead to Allen. Allen, quick move. Nice defense from Fisher. And he's always won as Bryant called for a reach in. Phil Jackson is always one that has let his team play through difficult stretches, wants to see how he handles it. So he's very particular about his timeouts. But that's in the regular season. He's one of the quick timeout takers in the playoffs. It, he adjusts his game as Pierce takes a wrap across the face by Bryant. And that's what I think makes him special. He's got a feel that very few have for 
momentum and the shift in momentum. I remember a game we were playing against him in Houston in a playoff series. We scored on a play, he took a timeout. We got a stop, we got a lob dunk coming out. He took another timeout, and that's how he changes. In the regular season, he allows you just to play through all that. Pierce, meanwhile, one of two from the line. That last foul on Kobe Bryant was his third. So Radmanovich has four. Bryant with three. Four for Perkins on Boston. Pierce also has three fouls in addition to the sprained knee. Ray Allen back on Kobe Bryant. Stolen by Pierce. Good help defense from Brown. Allen, bad pass. And Fisher with the steal. A bad read by Ray Allen. You catch the ball in that position, you have to look to score. Odom looks to score. As Kobe Bryant with his sixth assist of the game. That's the second numbers advantage break that they've blown in this game. In the first half, it was Posey on a breakaway. E.J. Brown, the rebound, where they're battling down low. Fisher takes it away. Allen banks it in, and a foul. This has become a very physical game. And that's how Boston's going to win. Pound the finesse Lakers on the board. And it starts with the post up of Kevin Garnett. So you have matchup problems. Everybody's on alert, looking to help. And then you punish them on the offensive board. Active underneath. Fisher staying active. But Ray Allen finally getting the basketball, getting the contact and the hoop. Odom with his third foul. Allen with 13 points. He also has six rebounds. And Ray Allen has five assists. A nice complete game. Hasn't shot great so far in the game one, but he's doing other things. I like the mentality of Brown. You don't just leave it up to Kevin Garnett and, and, the, and the Perkins of the world to be the rebounders. Little guys have to gang rebound and help the big. Bryant takes it out. Vujicic, the three-pointer, way off the mark, but he's fouled by Garnett on a three-point attempt. And Kevin Garnett, his second foul. Let's send it over to Michelle. Well, there you see Kendrick Perkins now. He'll complete the roster as he comes back out of the locker room. He has a left ankle sprain. All they needed to do back there, Mike, was retape it, and he, I'm told, he is expected to return to action. All right, Michelle. There's Vujicic at the line. Vujicic, the fiery guard from Slovenia. It's his fourth year in the NBA. He's always showed glimpses, but this year, really a lot of confidence. Eighth in the NBA in three-point shooting. He's been playing pro ball since he was 16 back in Slovenia and Italy as Perkins returns. Not quite the ovation that Pierce got, but I suppose. <laughs> it's nice to have you back here. <laughs> That's called token applause. That's called fake hustle applause. It should make them feel good. Well, Perkins, though, has had some great playoff games, especially game five against Detroit, where for a while he was the best player on the floor. Rondo to Allen. Vujicic on him. Vujicic a good defender as well. Five on the shot clock. Allen looking for an opening. Allen kicks it out. Rondo open. Won't go. And Allen knocks it away. Fisher, though, comes up with a good tough play from Fisher. Fisher alley up to Bryant. Beautiful feed as Fisher started it down the other end. Talk about the job that Derek Fisher has done, chasing down loose balls, making plays, and that time leading the fast break. Rondo on the drive, and he's fouled outside. Again, the Lakers have been in the penalty for a while. So they'll go back as Gasol picks up his third. You give me a proven guy any day of the week. Derek Fisher not waiting for the basketball, goes after it, chases it down, leaves the break, waits for the right time, then puts it upstairs to Bryant. And give the officials credit not calling that late charge on Fisher after he released the pass. Pierce tried to slide under him and get a charge and a very poor foul down at the other end by Gasol against Rondo. Give him some space, give him a cushion, make him shoot a jump shot versus put him on the line and take an unnecessary foul. Rondo one for two. With just under three minutes remaining. Third quarter of game one, it's all even. Been close throughout. And you see the biggest lead by Boston, seven. The Lakers' largest lead is five. Fisher looking. Shot clock down to six. Bryant sees that. 
Shot clock at two, Kobe Bryant fires away. It's good, Kobe Bryant drills it. 18 for the NBA's leading playoff score. And we've got 10 of them here in the third quarter. You're gonna sell these, that's good defense. What do you do, just Bryant? Too good on the offensive end. Brown to Rondo, back to Garnett. Garnett, the floater. And Bujicic touched it last, it's gonna be Celtic ball. Bujicic <laughs> trying to plead his case. Very likable, emotional player, Bujicic. <laughs> And it took him a while to find his niche. And his niche is hard-nosed defender, wide-open three-point jump shooter. DJ Brown gets it back into the point guard's hands as we hit the two-minute mark here in the third. Garnett, jumper. Gasol, the rebound. Rebound in numbers right now is plus 10 for Boston. Fisher, the experienced point guard against the young Rondo. Odom with five on the shot clock, drives, reverse block by P.J. Brown. Rondo to Pierce, Pierce for three, bang! Celtics back up by one. Outstanding read by Rondo in transition. That's how you run the point guard spot, finds Pierce, spot it up. Pierce playing with a sprained knee, Gasol to the basket. Misses Garnett right there to reject it. Rondo back to Pierce, another three. Puts it in, back-to-back -back three pointers for Paul Pierce. This crowd has absolutely erupted here in the third as Pierce just picks up another foul. And that's going to be number four. In transition, you see Rondo Pierce gets to the spot, delivers the basketball on point, knocks down the first one. It doesn't stop there. Fake penetration finds him again. Good look, good execution, and Pierce rolls. Again, Phil Jackson said that he's the heart and soul of the team. He's the one that can erupt offensively at the 41 points in game seven against Cleveland. He's got 15 here in the third quarter. And remember, he spent part of the third quarter in the locker room after being carried off by his teammates. And it reminds me of the young fellow when I watched the Knicks and Willis Reed come onto the floor out of the locker room. It's not about what you score. You're sending a message to the other guys on your team. There's no quit, nothing but fight. I'm not going to surrender. And he'll sit down, get a little rest now. Again, 15 of his points here in the third, but he also has four fouls as Kobe Bryant hits the first. Bryant now at 20 points, six assists. Final minute, third quarter. Rondo against Farmark, and he draws the foul. Rondo got hit in the head, now he's shaking up. P.J. Brown checks with him. And he'll just head to the line. And mind you, you can text the last name of your choice for the T-Mobile player of the game to 38657 from any wireless phone. And go to NBA.com slash vote to vote online. Standard rate supply. The winner will be announced at the end of tonight's game. I like the decision by Doc, who was also was about to get Sam Cassell into the ball game. Rondo makes two plays, and then just now penetrating creating the foul, allow the young fella to finish the quarter on a high. Rondo knocks it down, 14 points for Rondo. He was a player that Kevin McHale, a GM of Minnesota then, wanted in the Kevin Garnett deal, but Danny Ainge said no, wanted to keep him. Bryant for three, won't go. Rebound, tipped and taken by P.J. Brown. Crowd on its feet as we wind down quarter number three. Shot clock at seven. Shot clock at two, Rondo picks it out. Posey has to put it up. Won't go, Gasol the rebound. 
And that will end the third quarter. And what a roller coaster. Oh, boy, it just put it in from three quarters court, but it won't count. As Paul Pierce trying to keep that knee loose after spraining it earlier in the third, getting some congrats from the fans. At a four point play, back to back threes. This was early in the third. And then receiving a thunderous ovation as he emerged from the tunnel. Went back on the floor and erupted. Three quarters complete here in game one. Paul Pierce and the Celtics up four. Back in Boston, the Celtics have a four-point lead. Uh, Coach, you always find ways to work around injuries, but what was your reaction when you saw Paul Pierce re-emerge from the locker room? Well, I was happy, obviously. You know, I was scared when I saw him down on the floor. But I told our guys, that's why we work every day with all 12 in practice, and uh, we just got to hold him to the fort until he came back. Well, he now and Kendrick Perkins, two of your starters, each of them have four fouls, each of them a little dinged up. How does this influence your fourth quarter rotations? Well, we have a good bench, you know, and uh, our bench has to come through for us. They've done it all year. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Mike. All right, Michelle. The bench will start the fourth quarter. At least a number of them as Pierce tries to keep that sprained knee loose on the bike that's right by the Celtic bench. And again, if I'm the Celtics, I'm worried, where am I going to score the ball with this team? To me, Kevin Garnett's got to be on the bench a very short time. Kobe Bryant sometimes makes it look so easy. And you can tell Phil Jackson going for the home run now, leaving Kobe Bryant in the fourth quarter where he normally dresses his star to start the fourth. All the Lakers stars are going to play up near 40 minutes. Bryant's not going to take a rest. Allen knocks it down. Ray Allen, the only starter on the floor right now for the Celtics with Posey, Cole, P.J. Brown, and Cassell gives the Celtics a four-point lead. Allen does an outstanding job of selling that shot, getting Farmer in the air so he has a wide-open look. Bryant to Luke Walton. Walton the floater, short. Walton takes it away, but he's called for a loose ball foul. That will come down the other way. Walton, when he was a kid, he had to hear from his dad about how great the Celtics were all the time. And I think his dad, our man Bill, I think he predicted the Lakers, or actually predicted the Celtics would win <laughs> the series. P.J. Brown, blocked by Turiaf. Pull the rebound, he's fouled. And Pull will go to the line. Of course, this is just game one. Sunday night on ABC. Game two right here in Boston. Then it shifts to Los Angeles for games three and four, Tuesday and Thursday. All the games on ABC. Our coverage kicks off 8.30 Eastern. Temp-offs will be shortly after nine. As Poe goes to the line, and we do want to send along our best wishes. In fact, they made an announcement here earlier at the TV. The NBA and certainly us here at ABC like to send out our best wishes to a lifelong devoted Celtics fan who's in a hospital in North Carolina right now Massachusetts State Senator Ted Kennedy who's undergoing treatment in his battle with cancer in the hospital watching the game and we want to send our best wishes as the entire crowd did here earlier tonight 81 75 Celtics by six Chance of defense. They've heard that all season long. Bryant, tough shot. Way short. Air ball, but Odom right there to clean it up. That's good defense by James Posey. Forcing Bryant into a tough fadeaway jump shot with the contest. Sam Cassell had some big shots in the first half. Looking to take another. Throws it up. Bad shot that time. And Farmar able to control it. Cassell hit his first three shots. He's missed his next three. Farmar in the game. Nice pass, Turiaf, and he's hammered by Cassell. So Roni Turiaf will shoot two as Cassell picks up his first. So we talked about the defense against Kobe Bryant. It's not about stopping him, it's about containing him. Limit the damage that he can do. Posey puts himself in position to force Bryant to a fadeaway, but you gotta seal the deal defensively by chasing down the loose rebound. 
So Terry up to the line. Almost two minutes into the fourth quarter. Foul trouble. Again, Pierce has four. Perkins has four for Boston. Radmanovic and Odom each with four for the Lakers. Nobody else has that many. Curry up misses the first. Eddie House coaching over the sidelines. I think it's important to have guys like that. He's into the ball game. He's not sitting over there pouting, realizing this is an opportunity to win the whole thing, and he is an assistant coach for Doc Rue. And he's desperate to get in the game. And he can help him with his shot making. We noticed it at the end of the first half with Barmar, too. Having only played three minutes, he came out to congratulate Fisher on a great first half. It's great to see camaraderie of championship caliber team. Allen tied up, and Garnett has to go back. Able to save it to Brown, so it wasn't a backcourt violation. Casella jumper, puts it in. Big play by Kevin Garnett. If his feet would have touched the backcourt, it would have been a violation. Brian on the drive. Pass deflected. Garnett and Allen converging there. Allen, Cassell, that's a three. And Turi off the rebound. Still plenty of time left here in the fourth. Posey. Jordan Bryant. A very good defender is Posey, and then a bad pass from Farmar. It's only the seventh Laker turnover. Smart play by Ray Allen, pulling the ball out and getting it on the block to Garnett. Double team, so he kicks it out. Posey an open three. It's good. Largest lead of the game by either team, and the Lakers need timeout. Tell you what, you want to win a championship, find a way to get it done. Kevin Garnett not quitting on a play. Hustle gets the ball, keeps it alive, and then P.J. Brown, the ball movement, Sam Cassell knocking down the jump shot. And how about inside-outside attack, finding Posey all by himself. Gotcha. The Celtics having a good time and up eight. remaining game one of the NBA Finals here from Boston Celtics with the largest lead of the game our Gatorade cooler talk is around Paul Pierce and what he did here in the second half he really did a good job after hurting that knee went in the back everybody upset here wondering what's going on did we lose one of our big three but give Paul Pierce credit looked like Muhammad Ali coming out of the locker room Crowd going crazy, jumping around, impact immediately. Came out, knocked down the jumper, didn't stop there. Back to back threes, gave his team life, and now the Celtics believe. He had 15 points in that third quarter, and some of it was spent in the locker room. And you see, since Pierce went down, the Celtics have played inspired basketball. And to me, this is very interesting. Very rarely do the Lakers play big with two bigs in there. With Curry off now and Gasol makes them easier to guard if you're the Celtics. P.J. Brown comes up with a loose ball. Kobe Bryant right now on the bench. Gasol, shot won't go. Garnett comes in. Walton tries to save it. And it's going to be Laker ball. And that's back-to-back -back bad shots by Sam Gasol, especially when you have... Kevin Garnett on the block, which will create offense for everybody else. You have to play for him. This is a crucial time for the Celtics with Kobe Bryant on the bench. Crowd just looked for the replay, and they thought it should have gone the other way. Gasol to Turi off the jump shot. Ball tipped and taken by Ray Allen, who has seven rebounds in the game. Posey, good ball movement. Garnett, a good open look, but way short. It's the bottom of the rim. That's the same shot that Cassell just missed, but that's off a ball movement. So Doc Rivers is thinking, I can live with that type of offense. Fisher, two-pointer. Eric Fisher, another good shot. And he's had a strong game with 15. 
but that's a poor decision by Cassell to go under, and an interesting decision by Phil Jackson, putting Kobe Bryant on the bench when they went down eight. And a foul away from the ball. This is gonna go against the Lakers. Not the penalty yet as Turiaf picks up his third. Well, Fisher's gotten off, and he is a jump shooter. For Cassell to go that far under is just very poor recognition of who you're guarding. You're guarding a knockdown shooter in Fisher. Doc Rivers calls to Cassell over to say, get the ball to Kevin Garnett on the block. Garnett with four on the shot clock against Turiaf. He's doubled, kicks it out, Cassell, and now a 24-second violation. Well, two things, bad recognition because you get him the basketball on the block with the clock dwindling down. And then if you're Sam Cassell, once you catch it, you have to have clock recognition. Does not is not aware of the, the clock dwindling down and gets a 24-second violation. It's been a game with 13 lead changes, 12 ties. Each have had the lead for stretches. But it's been close throughout. Kujicic knocks down a two. He has become such a confident shooter in his fourth year in the league. And the problem with the other Celtics, this is a game that you should have grabbed when Kobe Bryant went to the sideline. Now, this bench has given him an opportunity to come back and close. Garnett comes up short. And Gasol with a rebound. Kujicic. Walton to Turiaf. Vujicic looking, shot clock down to six. Turiaf looks up, sees it at the opposite end, makes his drive on a pull-up jumper. Won't go, Gasol with a rebound. Bounce pass to Turiaf, lost it. Well, they've got a new 24. As we're at the midway point here in the fourth quarter. Quick move inside from Walton. Turia back to Vujicic, little fake, pass deflected, gets to Gasol, knocked out of his hands, and it's still Laker ball with two left on the 24, and we'll have a timeout. Here's sitting right now, but he has the big third quarter. Kobe Bryant sitting right now, and he'll be ready to check back in. 5.48 remaining in the fourth, Laker ball when we come back. Here at the New Garden, fans on their feet watching an NBA Finals game in person for the first time in 21 years as our Verizon Wireless game track leaves the Celtics up by four. Kobe Bryant has been solid. He also has six assists. Paul Pierce spraining his knee early in the third quarter, carried off, comes back, erupts late in the third as Boston now getting on track from three-point range. Two on the shot clock. Bryant has to put it up. Short and Rondo the rebound. Five boards for Rondo. And I think it's important to run late in playoff games. Half-court offense is very difficult to execute against good defensive teams late. Shot clock down to seven. Pierce back in the game, shoots over Fisher, knocks it down. 20 for Pierce. Here's what I love about that. You cannot allow to close out a ball game. Vujicic official to defend Paul Pierce. The ball has to find him. It did, and he punished the small defense. Ray Allen is on Kobe Bryant. Garnett's on Gasol. Picks it out. Vujicic for three. In and out. That one halfway down, but Gasol, the offensive rebound. And there's no need to help on Kyle Gasol against Kevin Garnett. Wide open shot for Gasol. That one won't go. Good looks for the Lakers. Well, they can't put it down. Six-point game with just over four and a half to play. Garnett's missed his last seven shots. <laughs> the danger is fast. Rondo jumper. P.J. Brown, offensive rebound and foul. Brown again with a play. They're going to call it on the floor, and it's only the 14th foul, so the Celtics will take it out of bounds. Initially on the last possession, it was Vujicic defending Pierce. He dives to the hoop and then Fisher switched on him. If you're Paul Pierce, your eyes have to light up. Too big, too much airspace. Use the lift and the length. 
nothing but net. Now Scott Foster signaled it was on the floor, no shot. Dick Bavetta said it's a two-shot foul. So those two are now talk. Bavetta, the veteran official, who's in his 26th NBA Finals game. It's Foster's very first Finals game. Good battle with those two. Brown pushing a bit. That was in the act of shooting. They called it earlier, though. Scott Foster came in late and called it on the floor. And, and Scott Foster is a heck of an official, and it's good that he's in a finals game. It's a big honor, his first finals game. Garnett on a jump shot. Fish of the rebound. Garnett, after he couldn't miss for a long stretch now, has missed his last eight from the field. Rondo a little shaken up. And to me, right now, Garnett, with his jump shot struggling, has to go at Pau Gasol and go and try to beat him off the dribble and get to the rim like he did in the first half. Defense! Defense! Coming up on four minutes remaining. Defense! Ryan on the drive, hard to the basket. Excellent help defense from P.J. Brown. Allen dribbles it off his foot. Doc Rivers just shaking his head. Fisher calling out to play. Fuyacic. And here's the rebound. A loose ball foul call against the Lakers. Now they're in the penalty. And Pierce will go to the line as Odom picks up his fifth. It's fifth personal. That's saying I got scratched. So what we're witnessing is the intangibles which makes the Celtics so successful. Talk about rotating defensively. P.J. Brown helping. And then the little things. Boxing out the bigger Lamar Odoms, who's an outstanding rebounder, but you keep a body on him and force him to go over your back. And you see Odom grabbing the jersey and the scratch, so Pierce will go to the line. Pierce has played his entire career here in Boston, and even he thought maybe this summer he was done with the Celtics, thought he might be traded. In fact, during the summer, playing pickup games in L.A. with Kobe Bryant, the two of them joked about who would be traded first. They both thought that they were going to go to another team. They're both very happy that it never happened, as you see the scratch there. That's great camera work. Yes, it is. I can't believe you're trying to get brownie points with the camera crew. <laughs> Pierce hits it again. This equals the largest lead of the game, 90 to 82, with just over three and a half remaining. Chance of defense for the best defensive team in the NBA. Defense! Bryant looking. Defense! Defense! Excellent defense from Pierce. Bryant short. P.J. Brown, another big play. I love what P.J. Brown has brought to this game. Link to protect the basket. Good rotation. Good rebound. Pierce back up top to Garnett. Garnett. Back shot way off the mark. Here comes Vujicic. And good transition defense by the Celtics. Odom now drives inside. Blocking foul called on P.J. Brown. And count the basket. It'll be a chance for a three-point play. And we'll take a timeout. Talk about Vujicic. In transition, finds Lamar Odom, ability to put the ball on the floor, avoids the charge and foul of P.J. Brown, gets the basket, and going to the line for the possible three-point play to close the gap. Finals from Boston, a six-point Celtic lead. It's 90 to 84, just under three minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. I don't know why either one of you guys have any interest in coaching either now or in the future. It's got to drive you crazy. They had a chance to go up 10, miss a shot. All of a sudden, it could be a five-point game. With the best closer in the game and Kobe Bryant. So Garnett's bank shot, if it goes in, most likely makes Phil Jackson take time out. Up 10, three and change. You're in good position now. Only up five. Odom now with 14. Plenty of time remaining. Both teams with multiple timeouts left. Lakers already in the penalty. Celtics have a foul to give. P. 
E.J. Brown in there playing big time minutes here in the NBA Finals, his first Finals game. Allen, good defense from Fuyacic. Allen forces it up, and they call a foul on Fuyacic. And he only slightly reacted, which tells me he committed the foul. It was only a mild protest. Well, a bad offensive trip for the Celtics. Once again, the clock dwindling down, but give Ray Allen credit. Recognizes that the clock is going down, puts pressure on Vujicic. Because he's a jump shooter, sells the shot fake, gets the contact. This is the first foul shot, but you have to knock down foul shots, and you have to execute to win ball games when you're talking about the final. Allen, 93% free throw shooting in the playoffs, one of the best in the history of the game. Misses one there, and it's still five. One for two. Kobe Bryant just two points here in the fourth quarter. The soul. Bryant stolen by Rondo, but he lost it. Back to Odom. Bryant maneuvering. Kicks it out. Fuyacic. Fight for the rebound. P.J. Brown again. What a performance from a 38-year-old, much like he did Game 7 against Cleveland when he came up big. Pierce has deflected. Under two minutes to play. Bryant drives right at Allen, back to Gasol, blocked, but a foul. And Gasol will shoot two as Kevin Garnett picks up his third. Kevin Garnett is third personal team foul. So two free throws for Gasol, who from the line in the playoffs is 71%. Gasol's played in so many big games in his international career on the national team with Spain. They won a world championship. These are certainly the biggest games of his NBA career as he misses the first free throw. Played in the playoffs three years with Memphis. They were always the underdog. They got swept each of the three years. Now he might be one of the pieces to a championship puzzle as he goes one for two. We're going to trap Rondo. And Fisher with the bump. And Rondo's going to go to the line. Fisher is second. I really like the way that Rondo has played tonight. I thought the doctor was stuck with Sam Cassell a little too long. Where Rondo has played with confidence. Sure, he's made mistakes, but he has been the best point guard for the Celtics, getting them in stuff and playing aggressive offensive. And Rondo is battling one of the most experienced point guards in terms of NBA Finals and Fisher. And it's a clutch free throw. You look at his numbers 15 points, seven assists, four rebounds, and just a couple of turnovers. Very solid at home during the playoffs, sometimes exceptional. He struggled a bit on the road, like a lot of young players do in their first real playoff series. Well, what I like about it is a young player that may struggle if P.J. Brown exits the ball game. The crowd gives him a well-deserved ovation. His numbers won't blow you away. Two points, six boards, block shot, couple of assists. But he had a huge impact. As the ball deflected, and last touch by Radmanovic. Garnett kept it alive. And if people are wondering, why is P.J. Brown coming out? It's because Phil Jackson inserted Radmanovic at the four, so the Celtics matched up with a small lineup, and there it hurt him on the free throw rebound. Six-point lead, 145 remaining. Rondo calls out a play. And I like this. Pick and roll with Rondo. Loves to get to his right hand. Rondo on the drive. Kicks it back out. Posey for three. Back of the ramp. Garnett on the slam. Follow. Eight-point lead for the Celtics. But because of the penetration by Rondo, the defense collapsed. Allows second shot opportunity. And KG with the big putback. Kobe Bryant looking for an opening. Posey bumps him. Bryant will try it again. And Posey a reach in foul. He didn't hear the whistle. It's tough to with his crowd. As Posey picks up his third, now the Celtics in the penalty. Your doctor is you want good offense. Rondo high, pick and roll. 
Dribble penetration finds Posey. That's a good look for KG. High percentage putback. That's a big time finish over Gasol. Getting my poster. I'm the big ticket. A big ticket and missed nine shots in a row, but kept the key possession alive to give him a new 24 on a tip off a rebound. This makes all the hustle plays one of the most intense players you'll see in any sport. There's another one. There's Bryant. Able to hit the free throw. Bryant now with four points in the fourth, 24 for the game. Still plenty of time left for the Lakers. Garnett. Garnett calling for the ball against Rabanovich. Here comes the double team. Right back to Garnett. Shot clock at seven. Garnett spinning, makes his move. Knocked away, but a reach in foul. And Garnett will go to the line. Tremendous offensive execution by the Celtics to repose Garnett. Garnett gave it up. Pierce, since the mismatch against Rodmanovic, went right back to Garnett. Very few teams double team a second time. Garnett got a lot of room to go one on one and get fouled. And even the patience early. Posey turning down a wide open look. Pulls it out, gets a good offensive trip. Patience pays off. Big free throw here. Garnett makes it a seven point game. He's got 23 and 12 tonight. 12 rebounds, three assists, his usual strong defense. Two big free throws there, and Phil Jackson will call a 20-second timeout. Kevin Garnett playing in his first ever NBA Finals. What a year it's been for Garnett and the Celtics. Now with a chance to take game one. They lead eight with a minute to play. Paul Pierce still checking that right knee that he sprained early in the third. It certainly hasn't hampered his play. And the big three, so impressive all year, not just with their play, but their sacrifice. Doing some good things tonight here in their first NBA Finals game. All right, Mark, if you're the Lakers, 101 to play, there's still time. What's the strategy? Well, still plenty of time. You want to get the ball into Bryant's hands and trust that he'll make the right play and then get stops on the other end. Misses the three. Garnett comes high in and snatches the rebound. His 13th board of the game. Now that they need to start fouling here. Here's the Celtics. You run this hole all the way down. You do not shoot early. You have to be fouling, but now it's too late. It's a three possession game. Too much time going off the clock. Shot clock at four. Garnett puts up the shot. Won't go. Redmonovich the rebound. Lakers have to push down by eight. Fisher, an open three. In and out. Allen the rebound. Allen dribbling. Still the Lakers not fouling, and finally a foul with 16.6 remaining. Why do they wait so long? Well, bad decision by the Lakers. Having an opportunity to foul on the previous possession, they do not. They allow the Celtics to eat precious clock time, and then that time waiting until Allen rebounds, pushes the ball to the floor. It is too little, too late. you got to be smarter if you're, the, if you're the Lakers. And the Celtics on the verge of taking game one. Allen back to the line. And this is the largest lead of the game with 16.6 remaining. And what a turnaround for the Celtics. Third quarter, they were down five. Lakers playing well. Paul Pierce, their captain, spraining his knee, carried off to the locker room. Crowd was quiet. It looked a little bleak. But Pierce returned. The Celtics played inspired ball. And now they're ready to take game one. 16.6 seconds remaining. Celtics, a 10-point lead. Sixteen point six seconds remaining. Celtics ready to celebrate after winning game one. They want game two Sunday night back here in Boston. All the games on ABC, 8.30 start. Tuesday and Thursday, the series shifts to the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Meanwhile, Paul Pierce is tonight's T-Mobile player of the game. 
A big third quarter, 15 in the third. Ball knocked out of bounds. Of course, now with Pierce, a question would be that sprained knee. How serious? Is he playing a little bit on adrenaline now? How is he going to react after a night? But that's where the two days off coming between game one and two is helpful for anyone that's a little bit nicked up. And Lakers just can't hit shots here in the fourth quarter. Miss another one. Five of 20 in the fourth quarter. And the Celtic defense tremendous down the stretch. Celtics take game one. Kobe Bryant, 9 for 26 from the field. Meanwhile, the story for the Celtics, Paul Pierce coming back from the knee injury, the huge third quarter, and he gets his first NBA Finals victory. He's with Michelle. All right, Mike, thank you, Paul. You got carried off. You came back and hit two threes right away. What was going on in your mind through that, the course of that whole injury? Uh, when, I, when I came down, I heard my knee pop, and I just thought, I, I tore it or something. It was it was hurting really bad on the ground. Uh, I know I sprained it. It's sore right now, but you know I, when I got in the back, I, I could put weight on it and, and I could change direction. So I said, hey, I'm gonna get out there. I need to be out here. It's the finals, and I need to be here for my team. And uh, you know I just sucked it up and pushed it. So we'll see how I feel tonight, tomorrow, and go from there. Getting this game one win, we know how important that is. But the way that you guys want it, what do you guys take away from this emotionally, mentally? Well, we got to get off the better starts, understand what they're trying to do, but it's the first time we're playing. We're going to get used to them. Uh, I thought we did a great job on Kobe and the rest of these guys, and these guys are good offensively, so we're going to have to some way, somehow, cut down their open shots and defend better in the first half, and we'll, get, we'll be good. Paul, thank you so much. All right, thanks. Mike? Tremendous performance for Pierce. Meanwhile, the Lakers, for the first time in his postseason, trail in a series. They've been so impressive, but it's only game one. Pierce hit back-to-back -back threes in that third quarter, part of his 22-point night, as the Bolton Celtics, after a 21-game absence in the finals, take game one. We'll be back.